Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane, this video is part of my Infinite Game Scores series, and today we're going to be going over Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Birth by Sleep has quickly become one of my favorite Kingdom Hearts games, and possibly my number one pick out of the whole series. While this game delves deeper into the history of the Keyblades, I can't help but draw parallels between the Keyblade Masters and Jedi from Star Wars. But I promise we'll return to this well-developed triad of stories soon. By now, all of you know that I love my combat, so if I'm declaring Birth by Sleep my favorite, the combat must be good. And you know what? It is. And I mean, it's really good. At first, I had to break habits developed in earlier games, but I adapted quickly and grew to love the nuances of the new command system. The command system feels like a hybrid of the card system from Rechain of Memories and Drive Forms from Kingdom Hearts 2. While the card system refreshes slowly by shuffling the deck, the command deck refreshes on cooldown timers for each ability. The system is much more action-paced and a welcome change. I would even go so far as to call it streamlined and near perfection. Attached to the command deck is the new abilities system. By combining commands and synthesis items, abilities attached to the newly formed command, and the best part is, when you fully level up the new command, the attached ability becomes permanent. While the drive form is missing from Birth by Sleep, it is replaced by the superior, the, the superior style change. Style change is more free-flowing and is triggered with a combination of command attacks placed in a particular order. Style change is wonderfully cin cinematic and very powerful. Players who master the new combat system can seamlessly flow from one style change to the next. With the new command deck, a minigame to quickly level command actions is included. At first, the game resembles a simplistic version of Monopoly, but command board involves planning future actions, sabotaging opponents, and planning your route. Ignore this minigame at your own peril. As promised, we will now return to the story. Like always, I'm not here to spoil anything for you by divulging the details. I truly love how this game shows the same story from three different perspectives. Each could easily stand on its own merit, but when woven together, details become clear and the plot deepens. Our three heroes are Aqua, Terra, and Ventus each with an overarching theme in their story that pulls the player into a more immersive experience. Aqua has an inner conflict between her orders and her personal code of honor. Will she do as ordered or will she do what she knows is right? Terra suffers an inner conflict with his own darkness. Will his drive to be the best push him over the edge into the abyss? Finally, the story for Ventus has a nice, unexpected turn of events. His story revolves around growing up and the loss of childish innocence. Wow, that was a lot to cover, but stick with me here, guys. We're almost done. Let's see the score for Birth by Sleep and how it measures up against the previous games of the series. To start off like everybody else, it gains three points just for existing. It is both digital and physical, so it gains a point. The immersion was about what I expected, so two points. Had multiple endings, so two points. Uh, the gimmick was actually the command more over than uh, everything else. Um, but it still had Disney characters and stuff, so yeah, two points. Voice actors in English. I mean, Leonard Nimoy and Mark Hamill. That's, that's enough of me going on about that. Three points. Game length, two points. Story, two points. Level design, two points. Complete experience, 
two points. Sense of progression, two points. Fairness and punishing RP, uh, punishing RNG. Uh, some of the HP res respawn mobs, HP reset respawn mobs are really bad. Um, so it loses a point. Technical difficulties, uh, platforming issues. There, there were some points where I obviously made the jump and the game decided no, so it loses a point. Um, game value to MSRP cost, two points. Choice and consequence, three points. Uh, definitely stacking everything up in your favor and how you play and, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, multiple storylines, three points. Soundtrack, two points. Visuals, two points. Difficulty, three points. Gameplay combat. Um, it gets two points because it feels a little bit uh, sluggish compared to earlier entries. But again, this is a game that's been adapted from the PlayStation Portable. So it, gained, it got its two points. Controls. Sorry, still can't customize them, but for some reason they felt a lot better. I don't know if it was because I was getting used to it or what, but two points. Camera, two points. Unlockables and rewards, two points. Sense of accomplishment, two points. That rounds this game out to 46 points. And guys, yeah, I've, I have to say it. Birth by Sleep is probably my favorite game out of all of Kingdom Hearts. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.